Welcome back. When we last left off in part one, the women's suffrage movement was split over whether to support the 15th Amendment, which gave African-American men the right to vote. And while this progress was celebrated by many women within the suffrage movement, others felt slighted because of their lack of inclusion. A rift in ideologies arose and the suffrage movement experienced major setbacks. How would women overcome this and finally achieve their goal of the right to vote? This is part two of the women's suffrage movement. In 1869, Lucy Stone and Henry Blackwell formed the American Woman Suffrage Association, focusing on a strategy of winning women's suffrage on a state-by-state -state basis. Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Susan B. Anthony, on the other hand, formed a group of their own called the National Woman Suffrage Association, focusing on a strategy of winning a constitutional amendment for women's suffrage. As these groups were forming, women continued to take on more expanded roles in society in the latter half of the 19th century. Some were able to take advantage of increasing educational opportunities at colleges such as Vassar and Wellesley. Others worked outside the home as clerks and secretaries in offices, as well as in department stores and even factories. Women also continued to develop social reform movements. The Women's Christian Temperance Union sought to ban alcohol to protect families from domestic abuse or lost wages. Florence Kelly fought for the protection of worker and consumer rights, and Jane Addams, along with others, created Whole House to relieve the suffering of poor immigrants in crowded cities. More settlement houses would follow. Meanwhile, the divide in the movement frustrated the goals American women had come so far to achieve. However, a breakthrough was made in 1890, when the NWSA and the AWSA merged to form the National American Woman Suffrage Association or N-A-W-S-A. The organization lobbied both state and national governments to grant women suffrage. They'd achieve early success, particularly in the West, where women won suffrage in the late 19th century. The movement continued to gain momentum until the early 20th century. By 1900, three million American women were working outside the home and gaining an independent voice. Thousands joined labor unions, primarily the International Ladies' Garment Workers' Union. A new catalyst for the movement emerged when tragedy struck. In 1911, the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire killed 146 people and convinced many that women needed a larger voice in politics and reform. And their voices indeed continued to grow louder as more impressive strides were made. By 1915, the Women's Christian Temperance Union won prohibition in 38 states and Frances Perkins worked extensively for the protection of workers' rights, later even becoming the first female cabinet member. However, many male politicians were unconvinced that women should attain suffrage. Senator J.B. Sanford expressed a common view of many in Congress that, quote, the mothers of this country can shape the destinies of the nation by keeping their place in the home. In 1911, a national association opposed to women's suffrage was started to stop a constitutional amendment that would give women the right to vote. Despite this, NAWSA won the support of Theodore Roosevelt's Progressive, or Bull Moose Party, in the 1912 presidential election. Unfortunately for them, he would lose to Woodrow Wilson. But while Wilson opposed women's suffrage, he could only provide the important moral persuasion of the office, as he had no official role as president in constitutional amendments. It was during this time that a new leader in the movement came to prominence. Alice Paul, a University of Penn-educated woman from New Jersey, would emerge as a leader within NAWSA and turn up the pressure on the Wilson administration. Inspired by the confrontational tactics she learned from British suffragists while studying in England, Paul pushed hard for suffrage by what were considered radical means. Paul persuaded NAWSA to let her organize a pro-suffrage parade held the day before Wilson's presidential inauguration. On March 3rd, 1913, 8,000 marchers holding signs for women's suffrage paraded on foot, floats, and even horses. Hostile crowds taunted and assaulted the marchers and injured more than 100. Paul and NAWSA developed disagreements over tactics. Paul also believed that suffragists should hold all Democrats responsible for failing to pass a woman's suffrage amendment, as they were the party in power. 
However, NAWSA supported any politician who favored women's suffrage, regardless of their party. Paul then split with NAWSA and formed the National Women's Party. Her harsh criticisms of World War I and the group's intense protests in front of the White House led to the arrest of Paul and her companions. After being sentenced to prison, Paul and many of her allies went on hunger strikes. When prison officials horrifically force-fed them, public sympathy for the women increased. Maintaining her sense of pride, Paul would declare that there will never be a new world order until women are a part of it. Meanwhile, Carrie Chapman Catt, leader of NAWSA, continued its state and national strategies. When World War I began, Catt urged members to contribute by working on the home front and proving their patriotism. These efforts finally bore fruit when both houses of Congress passed a women's suffrage amendment in June 1919. The 19th Amendment was ratified on August 18, 1920. The United States Constitution finally gave American women the right to vote. Let it be noted, however, that not all American women would enjoy this right. Black women were still unable to vote in many Southern states until the Voting Rights Act of 1965. One of the most persevering struggles in American history, the women's suffrage movement lasted 70 years across local, state, and national levels. And even though the movement would split over the best way to achieve full civic, economic, and social equality for women, the 19th Amendment meant that women had the right to vote and give their voice to a popular government based upon the consent of the governed. Inspired by these accomplishments, we can all do our part to advance greater civic equality. Thanks for joining us. This was the story of the women's suffrage movement. If you like this video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe.